Ever heard the name Walt Disney? How about the name Annette Funicello? Before Disney became the international entertainment powerhouse it is today, its reputation was built on the backs of multi-talented individuals. However, these days, those stars, like the wonderful Annette Funicello, are quickly getting lost in the history books. This is quite a sad situation. Therefore, in this video, we will do a deep dive into the life of Annette Funicello. We explore her child star years and her teen idol years, her relationship with Walt Disney himself, and also show you some of her rare photos. Let's get started. Virginia Gian Albano, a fiery redhead, met her future husband, Joseph Edward Funicello, at her brother Rocky's restaurant in Utica, New York. It was love at first sight, and the two eloped in 1941. After getting married, they gave birth to their first child, Annette Joanne Funicello, on October 22, 1942. In 1946, when Annette was four years old, her parents relocated to Encino, Los Angeles, to pursue the American dream. There, they raised their three children. Annette was quite a shy child. To combat this, her parents encouraged her to take singing and dancing lessons. This was something she excelled at. So much so that during a performance of Swan Lake at a dance recital in which she played the Swan Queen, a certain producer known as Walt Disney couldn't take his eyes off of her. At the time, Walt was in the grueling audition process for his new children's variety show, The Mickey Mouse Club. There was only one slot left to fill. In Disney's mind, Annette was the only child who could possibly make the roster complete. And so, in 1955, when Annette was 12 years old, she signed a $160 a week contract with Disney. The American dream, which her parents had come to Los Angeles, was finally fulfilled by their little girl. For Annette, this was only the beginning. The Mickey Mouse Club had a revolving cast of actors. However, Annette was the most popular. She received 6,000 letters a month from fans more than any other Mouseketeer. On the show, Annette matured in more ways than one. She had a crush on her co-star Lonnie Burr, who she dated and had her first kiss with. She also improved on her acting and singing, giving her the opportunity to star in many sketches and dance routines. Walt Disney, intending to capitalize on Annette's popularity, created a series just for her titled Walt Disney Presents Annette. On it, her performance of How Will I Know My Love drove fans crazy. Disney decided to issue Annette's rendition of the song as a single. However, he also unwillingly had to give her a recording contract. This contradiction was the first sign of the complicated relationship that Walt Disney had with Annette. Though he could be generous to her, sometimes it seemed he didn't want her to be too successful. In any case, after the Mickey Mouse Club's tearful goodbye in 1958, the 16-year-old Annette remained on contract with Disney. One of the highlights of her time was her three-episode storyline on the show Zorro. This was a sweet 16 gift from Walt Disney to Annette. Unfortunately, the rest of his gifts were not as great. For one, he had a plan to cast Annette in a live-action feature titled Rainbow Road to Oz. This would have been Annette's feature film debut. However, MGM dropped the movie and moved on to another project. This was mostly because Disney could not present them with a satisfactory script. Annette would later make her film debut in the Disney-produced comedy The Shaggy Dog. Starring Fred McMurray and Tommy Kirk, it would be a box office success. At the time, Annette hoped this would be a stepping stone to movie stardom. However, to her dissatisfaction, her singing career is the one that took off. From the late 50s to the early 60s, Annette recorded a number of chart-topping hits. These songs, mostly written by the Sherman Brothers, included Tall Paul, First Name Initial, O oh Dio Mio, Train of Love, and Pineapple Princess. They were all released by Disney. In 1959, at the age of 17, Annette released It's Really Love, a reworking of a Paul Anka song titled Toot Sweet. Having worked on two Anka songs, the singer developed a strong infatuation with her. Despite only a one-year difference between them, Anka was of age while Annette was not. As a result, Walt Disney stepped in to protect her from his constant advances. Anka released the song Puppy Love to express his hopelessly unlikely romantic crush on Funicello. However, nothing much came of their relationship. By December of that year, Annette was earning $500 a week from her Disney contract. This is equivalent to over $3,000 a week by today's standards. 
An appreciable sum? Sure, but far less than Annette believed she was worth to Disney. To earn what she believed she deserved, Annette took Disney to court to have her current contract annulled. She argued that she was without an agent or legal counsel when she was made to sign it. However, the judge was unsympathetic and threw out her demands. She would have to stick to the current terms till the contract ran out. On top of being unsuccessful with her legal gambit, Annette frayed her relationship with Disney. So much so that she did not re-sign a new contract with his company. She did, however, reappear in Zorro. She also appeared in the Disney-produced movies Babes in Toyland, The Horse Masters, and Escapade in Florence. In all three of those movies, Walt Disney paired Annette with Tommy Kirk. Even though he essentially had Annette in contract jail, he did not have much faith in her ability to carry a film by herself. In 1963, Annette was finally free of Disney. At last, she could break out of her image as a child star and enter her teen idol era. At the time, the production company American International Pictures was looking to cash in on the beach party movie genre. They signed Annette to a seven-year contract and paired her with golden boy Frankie Avalon. This proved to be a very successful endeavor. Throughout his affiliation with her, Walt Disney discouraged Annette from showing too much skin so as to maintain the family-friendly image of his brand. Now, she was free to use her assets for financial gain. In 1964, Annette appeared in yet another Disney movie alongside Tommy Kirk, titled The Misadventures of Merlin Jones. But for much of that decade, she worked with American International Pictures. Some of the movies she appeared in include Muscle Beach Party, Bikini Beach, Pajama Party, Beach Blanket Bingo, The Monkey's Uncle, Ski Party, and How to Stuff a Wild Bikini. These more or less solidified her image as a teen movie star. Other than the beach genre, American International Pictures tried their hands at stock car racing films. While these were less successful, they did produce such hits as Fireball 500 and Thunder Alley. Thunder Alley would be Annette's last lead role in a feature film for two decades. Because of her marriage, Annette was much quieter in the 70s. She prioritized her family over her career. She had gotten married to Jack L. Gilardi in 1965, and the pair had three children. Though they divorced in 1981, they remained close. Annette then married horse breeder Glenn D. Holt in 1986. In 1987, when Annette was 45, she reunited with her Beach Party co-star Frankie Avalon for a series of concerts to promote their film Back to the Beach. However, during the tour, she began to experience a large host of symptoms, including dizziness, headaches, and balance issues. When Annette visited a doctor, she was diagnosed with the neurological disease multiple sclerosis. This was a diagnosis she hid from her family and friends for five years. Finally, in 1992, Annette had to go public with the truth. A couple of malicious people were spreading the rumor that most of her symptoms were due to rampant alcoholism. To protect her image, Annette had to come clean about her health. Though it was scary, she faced up to it and even started a fund for neurological disorders at the California Community Foundation. In 2011, Annette's Encino home burned down. She suffered smoke inhalation, but was otherwise fine. She was forced to move away from her childhood home to a modest ranch in Shafter, California. There, she spent the rest of her years. For 15 years, Annette stayed away from the public eye, so much so that some fans started to go crazy, wondering what was going on with her. This caused the Canadian media company W5 to release a profile on her in 2012. Their findings were not the least bit flattering. According to them, the disease had progressed so much that Annette had lost the ability to walk. She had also lost the ability to speak. To make sure she ate, her caretakers had to use a feeding tube. Because she needed round-the-clock care to stay alive, her lifelong best friend Shelly Faberis stuck around to help her. The very next year after the profile came out, at the age of 70, Annette passed away at Mercy Southwest Hospital in Bakersfield, California. She was surrounded by friends and family at the hour of her going. Though Walt Disney himself was long dead by then, Disney CEO Bob Iger released a statement praising her achievements for the company. True to his words, she was as beautiful on the inside as she was on the outside and absolutely helped the company get where it is today. She deserves to have her memory cherished and protected. If you enjoyed this video, there's a good chance you'll also enjoy the one showing on your screen right now. Click, enjoy, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. See you on the next one.